All right. Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, whatever time zone you're in. It's the morning here in Cleveland, Ohio, where Marissa and I are located. My name is Joe, and I'm here from Overdrive, and I'm so excited to introduce you to Libby today. So Libby is kind of your one-stop shop for your borrowing and enjoying of ebooks, audiobooks, and so much more. Uh, I'm going to take everyone through the basics portion here at the top of the presentation. So everything you need to know for your day-to-day -day life in the Libby app, uh, just kind of a great way to get started and a great way to kind of facilitate to anyone who has questions. So great info to hold on to for your patrons. Now, Marissa then will take over at kind of the midpoint and she will take us through what I like to say are the cherry on top of the Sunday features, some of our favorite tips and tricks and we'll deep dive into those. Um, kind of at that midpoint, we'll break for questions. So if there's anything you'd like to see in the app from the basics portion, we'll show it off there. And then at the very end, we'll set aside about 10 to 15 minutes to also cover uh, questions that pop up by the end or anything you'd like to see again. All right, so I'm gonna take just a second here to share my screen. And there we go. All right, wonderful. So I'm going to take you through the basics of Libby. Like I said, I'll be using my demo library from Overdrive, just a great way to get a good cross section. So uh, let's start by working our way through the app interface. The first thing I want to point out is this navigation bar at the bottom of the screen. You should see five icons here. We're going to work our way through these five icons during the my portion this morning, uh, but we are starting off where everyone goes when they want to find a new title, and that is the library. So we've got this library icon right here, and I like to think of this like your opportunity to walk around the physical library, only this time it's walking around the virtual library. This is where we send people when we want to browse for that new title. A few ways you can do that. First thing, of course, you can use these filters up at the top. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory, like just added is the newest titles put into your collection. Uh, random is just going to kind of sort them out for you in a fun new order. Available now is one I love. These are titles without hold lists, so you can borrow and dive right in right away. And then, of course, subjects. Great way if you're more of a genre reader. As we continue down, we have these. Uh, yeah, he was talking. Oh, we haven't any problem with uh, the video there? Probably. Oh, here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to hop into, like, we can look at these guides right here. Another great way to browse through. This is where you'll find uh, different curated lists on kind of an easier basis. You'll also find magazines in here typically. You'll also see this extra button. Of course, this is our demo library, so you'll see some additional options here, uh, but you might find access to different content. Like here we see Canopy, a great streaming video service. Or if you keep scrolling through this main page, you're going to see all of these different curated lists. And the best way to think of these is like when you walk through the library, right now we're heading into the holiday season, you're going to see different end caps with collections like cozy mysteries, things that are nice to snuggle up with if it is snowy where you're at. So you could scroll through this library tab for quite a while, but when you know exactly what you're looking for, you'll go back to the navigation bar and tap on that magnifying glass. This is going to allow you to search by title, author, series name, magazine name. You can even use keywords, but I recommend sticking to those first three. And today I would like to look up the book Grant. So I'm just going to type in that title and I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard here. Now this is going to show me everything that matches the title grant and uh, what I was looking for actually popped up right at the top. So now that we have done our first search, there's two great things I can point out here. The first is a difference between an ebook and an audiobook. So much like your traditional reading experience, if you are looking at a physical book, it's that rectangle. We've got this rectangular jacket cover. 
We're also seeing read sample, another great indicator. But if you are looking for the audiobook, quick way to do that with your eyes, you've got that square jacket cover, kind of like a CD case. And underneath, you'll see a runtime. So this is quite a long audiobook. It's about 48 hours. And then you'll also see play sample instead of read. So let's go through and start by showing you how to place a hold. Sometimes you're going to run across titles like that. Even in my demo library, I've got to wait for holds on occasion. And so I'm just going to tap on place hold. From here, we'll see you are placing a hold on grant. And it's even telling me just about how long I'll wait to be able to read this. I'll tap that place hold button to confirm. And now my hold is all set. Libby's going to give me a few options here so I can decide what I want to do next. I could play the sample, which is the first 30 minutes of the audiobook, or I could say keep browsing. I want to go back to that search I was just in because now let's go through the steps to borrow the, phys or the uh, digital book version. So I could do the same thing where I tapped placehold. I could just tap borrow, but maybe someone recommended this book and, you know, they're your good friend, but they don't always recommend good books, so you want to read the description of it. To read that back jacket cover, tap on the grant cover there, and then you'll be taken to the title details page. From here, you can scroll through, see anything and everything you want about the book, the full description, even continuing down to see some more kind of like nuts and bolts of the title itself. And if you decide this is a title you're interested in borrowing, you could tap on borrow, and then we'll be brought to this confirmation screen. <clears throat> now, I'll take a second to pause here because, of course, up at the top, I can see you are borrowing grant for 14 days. Now, at my library, we can go up to 21 days. So, if you would like to lengthen your hold or your lending period, instead of uh, just hitting borrow, tap on where it says 14 days and then you could increase or decrease it. So maybe you're a speed reader and you're gonna be done in just a week, you could drop it down. Or if you need a little more time, if your library offers that option, you can bump it up. Now that I have 21 days selected, I'm going to tap on borrow and that book is going to start processing for me. Now, if I were on a mobile device today, I'm using LibbyApp.com, which is an option, but you can also download the Libby app on Apple mobile devices or Android mobile devices. Uh, if I were on an, an app-based device instead, this is where Libby would download it for offline usage. So if you want to be able to read when you are not connected to the internet or Wi-Fi or anything like that, just make sure you see that check mark and you're using an app. Uh, device as opposed to uh, LibbyApp.com. So just a, one of the kind of differences between the app version and the browser version. All right, so let's dive in and look at some features within an ebook. I'm going to tap on open book, and this one may be a little tricky depending on where you're stationed. Kindle uh, is available US only, but since you are coming from a US account, you should be fine. You do have the option to send titles to Kindle devices. If you have like a Kindle Paperwhite, you could send it there for offline reading, or you could use Libby, either app or uh, browser version. I'm going to skip over Kindle today because I'd have to sign into my Amazon account. There's no good way to block out that password when screen sharing. Uh, and we wanna show off some of those Libby features. But if you do have a Kindle you want to use, some simple step-by-step -step instructions on screen. Now, when we open our ebook for the very first time, we're going to have these menus at the top and bottom of the screen. To start our progress forward, I'm just gonna switch to one page. Uh, we are going to tap in the center of the screen and those menus will disappear. Now, when you're ready to page forward, you can either tap on the right side of your screen or swipe from right to left. And everything is preserved here in the ebook version as if you picked this book up off the physical shelves. We've got blank pages, we've got you know any and all text. So we're just gonna skip forward a little bit through all this publishing information until we get to a nice chunk of text. 
Whew, and this is a long one to get into. All right, there we go. So we've got our page here. Maybe you need this to look a little different for you. Let's look at some of the ways we can adjust our appearance settings in an ebook. I'll tap in the center of the screen to bring those menus back up. It's another way that you can do that when you're ready to exit. And I'm going to tap on this A icon. That will open up our appearance menus. Now there's three things we can change in here. The first is our text scale. I like to say you can make any ebook a large print book, but depending on the device you're on, you may need to make this really big or really small, whatever works for you. Next, we have our lighting. So by default, Libby will be set to bright, but there's also sepia and dark modes available. Dark is nice and easy on the eyes, great for reading at night. And then last, we have our book design, which is our fancy way of saying font. So by default, it will be presented in the font the publisher chose when they were printing the book. But you also have four other pre-made options, including our open dyslexic font, which may help some users with dyslexia while reading. And I'm going to go through and quick flip these all back to my defaults because these settings are what we call sticky. So you only have to make those changes one time on the device you're reading on, and then all of your books will match in font size, background color, uh, different font itself. So whatever works for you, you only have to do that the one time. You can always go in and adjust it, but Libby will remember the way you like it. I'm gonna drop that appearance menu out of the way by tapping just above the shade, and let's leave this ebook. So I'm going to tap in the center of the screen one last time, and then tap on that back button in the upper left-hand corner. So let's take a moment to reorient everyone. We are now on our shelf. So in the navigation bar, the first thing you'll notice is this now reading bar. Libby puts this here so you can hop right back into whatever you were reading or listening to, and it's a great way to kind of keep your place while you scroll through different apps or when you're done reading for the day. So I'm actually going to dismiss this. So we have our full navigation bar here. So we started on the library building where we browsed for a title. Then we used the magnifying glass to search for Grant. Now that we've opened and closed a book, we are over on our shelf, which is this stack of books icon. So a few things about your shelf. There are some filters up at the top, first loans and holds. You can use that if you want to divide yourself out into different, uh, different views. You wanna just check on your hold weight or you know, see all of your current loans. And then you'll also notice tags. Marissa will be talking about tags in our deep dive portion. Now, everything that you have on loan or hold is going to appear on this shelf, and it will appear from most recent and then go back into the oldest. And you'll see we've got a lot of variety of titles here on our shelf. So now that we've looked at an ebook, let's take a moment to pop into an audiobook. I'm just going to open up Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. And let's just take a look at some of the high points here in an audiobook. So it looks pretty similar to that ebook version. We have menus on the top and bottom. The bottom is all of your kind of uh, chapter details. You can use this to scroll through time. And then up at the top, you can see your full progress. We're about 25% through this audiobook with just under three hours left to go. When you're ready to start listening, all you need to do is tap on this big circle in the center, this play button. And you shouldn't be able to hear the narrator, uh, but I won't let this play too long, just in case you can. Uh, whenever you start listening, that play button transforms into a pause button, and that's the way that you will stop playback. So Libby is designed to play audiobooks in the background, meaning you can lock your phone screen and put in headphones and do the dishes, which is almost always how I get the dishes done by listening to an audiobook. Or you can uh, be listening to an audiobook, but scrolling through social media or online shopping, and Libby will keep playing uh, regardless, as long as that app is open and it's playing. So just remember to tap that pause button when you're all done listening. Some other key features in an audiobook. The first one I like to point out is this speedometer button. 
If you tap on this, you can change the playback speed. One is the normal speed, you know, kind of the default. And then you've got some presets here. Or you can use this fine tune slider to slow down the narrator to almost half or speed up to three times the normal speed. The other button, probably my favorite of them all, is this crescent moon, and that is the sleep timer. Uh, so you can use one of the presets. My favorite of all of them is the end of chapter, so this time will always be different, uh, just taking you to the end of the chapter you're currently on. Or you can use that fine-tune slider to go from five minutes all the way up to two hours. Now I'm going to leave an, uh, the audiobook by tapping on back, and we are back on our shelf. We'll reorient one more time here. We've got a new now reading bar, and this is for that audiobook we just opened. And I'll tap on that X to close it out. So next to our shelf, we have this clock icon. This is our timeline. Your shelf is all of your current loans and holds, but your timeline is your history. So while some of these will be current, this is more so, like I said, that historical record of everything you've ever uh, borrowed or placed on hold, renewed or returned. So you can scroll through that if it's something you're interested in looking at. All right, one final button here. I'm going to hop into the Libby menu. And just, I would say just a few, but quite a few things to talk about in here. So the Libby menu is your, div, your kind of like app settings for the Libby app. Everything you need to look at and browse through lives right in here. So we'll start up at the top where we see manage notifications. Now I'm going to tap into this, but you don't have to hunt for this option. When you first place a book on hold, Libby's going to bring this menu to you. It's just a little more important uh, for you to understand what some of these options are so you can make more of an informed choice once you place that first hold. Now this is where we see the other big difference between LibbyApp.com and the Libby mobile app. So our top option at LibbyApp.com is email notice. If you want to be notified by email, you do have to set it up at LibbyApp.com. But if you are using the Libby app itself on your smartphone or tablet, this will be a push notification option instead. So it will appear on your device's lock screen, similar to a text message. The next option is menu badge. That's going to appear I'll actually use my cursor. Right next to Libby's head, it'll be a small number. If you only have one notification, there'll be a little red circle with the number one in it. This is great if you plan to open Libby every day, or it's a notification that you don't mind seeing a little later. But if it's something you never want to miss, go with email or notification. Or if it's something you can check a little later, or if you're in there every day, use menu badge. And of course, you've got the opportunity to ignore. From here, you've got quite a few things you can be notified about, but the most important is hold ready. So when you place the title on hold, uh, you know, Libby's going to keep your place in line, you're going about your business, and one day she is going to message you and say, hey, your hold is ready. You'll either be notified by menu badge or push notification. And when she says this book is ready to be borrowed, you have a three-day period to make one of three choices. You can either borrow that title within that three-day window. You could have Libby deliver the title later, meaning she keeps your place in line, but you could say, I don't want this for another three weeks. You'll stay at the top, but she'll let people pass over you until that wait period is over. Or of course, you could cancel the hold. Now, if you don't take one of those three actions in that three-day window, uh, the first time you miss the opportunity to do something, Libby will one time as a courtesy for you, keep your spot in line and deliver it later. If you don't make one of those choices the second time that book comes available, Libby's going to cancel your hold and you'd have to rejoin the waitlist from the end of the line. And there's no bigger bummer than missing out on a book you've been waiting for. So just make sure your notifications are set in a way you like for hold ready. All right, next we have your libraries. You'll see all of your current library cards pop up here. You can add those one at a time. 
Um, I know y'all are probably already familiar with adding library cards uh, into Libby or your different sign-in processes, but once you get your first one set up, if you have access to a second library, you can tap on add library and just do the same steps to search for your library and sign in with your credentials. This is great if you, of course, are already using your military library service, but you also have a home library card, you could add in that library. So on my personal device, I think I have four library cards because in Ohio you get your city, your county, and then the state library cards, and then I have, you know, an overdrive card. So just make sure if you've got access to other libraries, you pop them in there, it gives you even more content to browse through and sometimes shorter wait lists. Last, we have two things to talk about in help and support. So I'm going to hop into settings really quick. And uh, the thing I want to point out is customize navigation. So we have been enjoying our icons here in the navigation bar with these helpful labels underneath them. So, you know, while it may be pretty self-explanatory to you that this is a library, um, not everyone knows that. And by default, the icons are not labeled. So I recommend uh, helping with your patrons as they get started by taking them into the Libby menu and then under settings, go to navigation bar and turn on labeled icons. I've been using Libby for quite a few years now and I love having the labeled icons on. It makes it so much easier. Even though I train in this, there's something that my, my eyes and my brain appreciate just by seeing that name under that icon. So keep that in mind. Now, the last thing, of course, under help and support that I want to talk about is get some help. You have two ways that you can get help from, uh, you know, some wonderful resources here at Overdrive directly within the Libby app. The first one is kind of the self-guided route. If you come up to how can we help, you could type in um, your question. So maybe you wanted to learn how to return books early because this is something I don't talk about in the basic session because books return automatically on their due date so you never have to worry about fines or late fees. But if you did want to learn how to return a book early, you could type in as simple as return. Libya will give us a suggestion and I can tap on returning books. Libby's going to tell me that they return themselves, but if I wanted to do it, he, she would also give me those steps so I can return titles early. Now, if you didn't find the answer you were looking for, or you had a deeper issue or just some additional questions, you can reach out to our Overdrive tech support team. It's a team of Libby experts who live and breathe the app uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they are here and ready to help. So anytime you type in and go into an article, you'll see at the bottom, ask our support team. And if you click into that, you'll have a problem, a question, or an idea. And you can just type out, you know, maybe it's just a question. Hey, I wanna know a little bit more about this. And they'll get back to you, usually kind of like at the highest within 24 hours, um, unless of course there is another massive problem uh, like at the start of the pandemic in 2020 we were pretty swamped in the tech support department but that wraps up those libby basics and i am now going to stop sharing my screen and uh look and see if there's any questions that i needed to answer now otherwise i'll hand it over to marissa Give a couple minutes for questions to come in, but I will start sharing my screen here. Yeah, um, so I'll, I'll read them out to you while you start sharing, if that's okay, Marissa? Of course. Okay, so does the support go to you first or does it come to the library help desk first? Christina, that is a great question. If you are uh, sending something directly through in the Libby app, it is going to go straight to our OverDrive technical support team. So it's not going to go to the library help desk. There is an option where you can set up um, kind of on the back end uh, that if patrons go into the Libby menu and they go into help and support, there is a contact your library button that could be directed. Um, 
But if you have a process where you'd prefer them to go to your help desk first, I'd maybe set that up just kind of somewhere. And then we have another great question from Anne for the timeline. Is there a way to not save the history for privacy? Marissa, do you mind showing that? So if you hop right into the timeline, um, it is up in actions at the top and you can say disable activity recording. And then for all of your um, privacy purposes, you don't have to worry about anything being recorded. You can also, like you see directly underneath, remove all activities. So if you want to clear it out first and then disable, it's right there for you. Great questions. Awesome. Um, and we will be talking about export, making and exporting tags in this session. So uh, stick around. Marissa is actually going to get to that uh, in in a couple tips. <laughs> but we, yes, we will show you how to export your tags. All right. Well, Marissa, I'm going to let you get started. Marissa is going to take us through four tips and tricks. We're going to start by talking about magazines. Then we are going to show ways that you can filter and refine lists to find the books you like faster. Then we'll go into tags, probably our favorite tip and trick of them all, before we wrap up with some info on making and exporting notes and highlights. After that, like I said at the start, we will have some additional time set aside where we'll go through and answer more questions live directly within the Libby app so you can see uh, anything you'd like to see again or uh, for the first time. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. So as Joe said, we're going to first start talking about uh, magazines and how to navigate throughout those. Now, of course, you can search for magazines the same way that Joe showed off searching and browsing in the getting started session. So you could always hop into the magazine guide at your library, or you can search for a specific magazine using that magnifying glass. I already have one downloaded here, so I'm going to go ahead from my shelf and just open up the magazine that I already have. Now, one thing that's great about magazines that you won't um, you won't experience in the ebook and audiobook versions of uh, of things that you can borrow is that magazines are uh, what we call simultaneous use. So that means everybody can borrow the magazine at the same time. Unlike ebooks and audiobooks, where you have to join a holds list. We all can read, uh, 100 people could read Popular Mechanics, and uh, these do not affect your loan limit. So um, you can borrow up to a certain amount of books and ebooks, but when it comes to magazines, you can, you could borrow and download 100 magazines if you wanted to as well. So those are the two things that kind of make magazines special here in the Libby app. Now, just like in the ebooks and audiobooks, up at the top and the bottom of the screen is where we're going to have our menus. And you can see our reading progress here as well. So I'm on page one and two of 96. And then down at the bottom of the screen, you also have this uh, extra feature here, which is uh, all of the thumbnails, or which are all of the thumbnails. Didn't need to click that there. And you could certainly use this to navigate throughout um, if you wanted to. I always joke that our developer, whoever made this uh, <laughs> way to navigate had perfect vision because I, I personally can't see it very well. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so I'll show you a couple different ways that you can navigate if you don't want to use those thumbnails down at the bottom of the screen there. So I'm going to drop my menus off the screen by tapping in the very center. And then we can start paging forward just like in an ebook by tapping or swiping on the right side of the screen to page forward. Now, if you're someone who likes to borrow magazines and just read one or two articles instead of reading the entire magazine, uh, ads or articles, then what you can do is page forward until you find the table of contents here. 
And then you can see as I hover over them, they all link out to those specific articles. So maybe we wanted to read this article about the Game and Toy Awards. You just have to click or tap on that article when you're in the table of contents and Libby's gonna take you right on over to that page. Now, if you're on a larger device like a computer or an iPad Pro, those things are absolutely massive, then this traditional magazine view here might be large enough for you to be able to read that article without any issues. If you're on a smaller device like a phone or a smaller tablet, maybe an iPad mini, then down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see this circle with a little page inside. This is the article view. And if you tap into the article view, you'll see I have two separate pages. I have the beginning of the article and then this ad here as well. You can select which article you wanna read. I wanna go to that gaming article. And you'll notice that this article has now popped up into a scrolling menu. So this makes it a little easier to read. And then it also has your reading settings um, set from your ebook. So that A icon up there at the top, you'll remember that from the ebook experience. If you have adjusted your font size in an ebook, then it will just carry on over into your magazine experience. You won't need to set it again. However, if you are, if you've never done that and you open up a magazine and come into this article view, you do have the option to increase or decrease your font size or change that background color as well. Now, this article view is quite nice. So a lot of times you want to navigate while you stay in the article view instead of continuing to close the article view to go back to the main traditional magazine view. And to do that, up at the top of the screen, you'll see arrows pointing forward and backward. This is how you can stay in the article view, but move forward into the magazine. So you can see I'm still in that scrolling menu here. Now backwards does the same thing. It just takes you back a page. And then right in the very center here, you'll also have the table of contents. Um, but again, this is keeping us in the article view. So if I tap on the table of contents here, and let's say I now want to go um, over and look at this article about the world's smallest implantable chip. I can tap on that article in that table of contents. And again, I'm staying in that scrolling menu. I'm not going back to the traditional magazine view first. So this is probably the most popular and easiest way to navigate in a magazine is by using the article view so that you have that customized font size. Now, when you're ready to leave a magazine, you just have to either tap the down arrow or hide when you're in the uh, article view here. Those both do the same thing. They achieve the same goal, which is to drop that article view out of the way for you. That will take us back to that traditional magazine view. And up at the top of the screen, you'll see that back button, just like in eBooks and audiobooks, which will allow you to leave that magazine. So that was a quick first tip for you, all about navigating throughout the magazine experience. <clears throat> Pardon me. We're now gonna move into tip number two. And this is all about finding the books that you like faster. So we're gonna go ahead and go over to that library icon here. This is where we browse, obviously. And we're gonna talk about um, two different ways that you can make sure you're finding books that you like faster. So instead of going um, and searching through 78,000 titles within the available now, we're gonna filter and refine that down uh, and save us a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap into available now. This is gonna present us, like Joe said, with a list of titles that currently do not have a waiting list on them. So they're all available to borrow right away. Now, 
The first part of this tip is how to make a preference, which is a filter that is saved and applied to all lists in Libby. And you'll see on the dark blue bar on my screen here, preferences is on the left side. Now, as I mentioned, these are filters that are saved and applied to all lists. And what that means is once you set a preference, you could open and close Libby and uh, turn on and off your device a million times and Libby's still going to remember that you have preferences set and filter content out that you're not interested in. So in instances where you might want to set a preference, there are three pretty popular ones. The first is uh, language here. So when I look for a book in Libby right now, you can see um, that any is the option that's selected. That means if the book is written in French, Japanese, Chinese, etc., it's going to show up when I'm looking for a book. Now, much to my French teachers uh, in high school's dismay, I didn't retain very much of that. And so I only speak English and I run into this a lot. Uh, when I'm helping train. If you only speak one language and you want to make sure you're only seeing books that are written in that language instead of all of the other books written in other languages, you can select your preferred language and that way Libby's going to start filtering out um, all of those other books written in other languages. Now some other popular um, preferences that we see when we're training are format. Right now, when I look for um, a book or browse, I'm seeing ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. If you have a preferred format, maybe um, reading isn't as easy with your eyes anymore, you prefer the audiobook experience just because it's a little easier for you, you could select an audiobook preference, and that's going to make it so that Libby no longer shows ebooks when you're searching for a book. So makes it a little easier for you that way. And that works vice versa. You can select for any of those formats there and Libby will show you that selected format only. Now, the last popular one is audience. Right now we're seeing all, um, but if you have kiddos that have their own library card, they have their own device, you could also um, set a juvenile or young adult preference. That makes it so that, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey isn't coming up when they're looking for a book. They're only seeing age appropriate content there. So I'm just going to stick with my English preference. That's what typically what I have on my device. And then I'm going to go ahead and tap apply preferences. And you'll see that Libby is now showing me a little one in a circle right next to preference. And that's just Libby letting you know, hey, I'm currently filtering content out. You know, you chose um, English. I have an English preference set. And um, it's just her little warning sign there. So you always know if you have a preference set. Now, we're going to talk about... Um, or we just talked about, uh, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> lost my words there. We just talked about uh, preferences, which are saved and applied to all lists. That means that no matter how many times you open and close Libby, they're going to come back. I'm now going to talk about how you can do a temporary filter. This is going to be just for the list that you're looking at right at that moment. And then the next time you search for a book, Libby is going to revert back to those defaults. And for this, I always give a little prompt here. So we're starting out with um, almost 70,000 titles here. And let's pretend my mom and I are going to go on a road trip tomorrow, and I need to look for a book for us to listen to on our way there. So I obviously want an audio book, although I have made my mom read to me on road trips before. I'll take it easy on her this time. We want something that is going to be a mystery historical fiction. That's her favorite. And then lastly, a new release. So maybe something that came out in the last year or so. Those are going to be the criteria that I'm going to use to start narrowing down this really large list. So the first thing I said was an audiobook instead of an ebook or a magazine. So what we're going to do is right here where it says listing, 
you can see it's telling me 37,000 books, 22,000 audiobooks, and almost 3,000 magazines. I'm just going to tap on audiobooks here, and that's going to narrow the list down to just the audiobooks. Now, over on the right side of the screen, you'll see this refine button here. This is our temporary filter right across from our permanent filters. And again, these are going to revert back every time you look for a book, unlike preferences will. So let's go down to subjects. I'm going to select uh, mystery first. That's going to drop our uh, list down to 28,000 audiobooks. But I don't want just a mystery title. I want a mystery historical fiction title. So I'm going to come back to refine and select my second subject here. I'm going to scroll a little bit, find historical fiction, and select that as well. So you'll see that number has now dropped down to 219. Now, I show this off so that you know you can find niche subjects in Libby. So right now, this list is not mystery titles and then also historical fiction. This list is actually all books that are both mystery and historical fiction at the same time. Now, between two and four subject filters are typically going to get you where you need to go. Once you move past that, if you start getting to four and five or five and six and seven of those subject filters, Libby's going to have a very uh, limited list of titles to give, give you, if any at all. Um, so between two or four is generally where I say that sweet spot is. Now I have one more piece of criteria to meet, and that is going to be a book that is a new release. So I'm going to come back to refine, and I'm going to scroll down a bit here and find sort by. I'm currently sorted by popularity, but instead I want it to be sorted by release date. And that's just going to make it so those newest titles show up at the top of the screen. And then as we make our way down the list, they're going to get older and older. So we started out this tip with over almost 70,000 titles. And we've narrowed it down to 219 audiobooks with just a couple of clicks. And that is how you can filter and refine your searching and browsing to find the books that you like faster. I'm going to stay on this page here as we move into tip number three, which is all about tags. And um, at the end of this tip is when I'm going to show you how to export your tags as well. But first, let's just talk about what tags are and then how to make them. So in Libby, you can use tags to organize books that you have read or want to read. You can make wish lists. You could also make lists of maybe audiobooks by duration. That's something I do a lot. I'll ha I have a little tag on my device that's audiobooks under five hours. So you can really get creative with the lists that you make. You're not limited to uh, just a wish list or a history. You can create as many tags as you'd like to stay organized. So let's go ahead and show you how to tag a title. And then I'll answer that question on how to export the tags as well. So let's say we are going through this list of titles uh, on that road trip. I'm looking for a book for my mom and I. And I come across Clark and Division. It looks interesting to me, but um, maybe my mom isn't going to enjoy it. So I want to save it for later. What I'm going to do is tap on tag. It's that third option there next to Clark and Division. And here we can create a new tag or tap on any of our existing tags to add it to one of those lists. Now, regular tags are just tags that you create uh, for organization's sake. So they don't have any special abilities. It's just a simple list that you created to stay organized. Here are good examples, my to be read, so my wish list, and then a cooking list with some recipes from uh, magazines that I enjoy. Now, right below that, you'll see a section that says smart tags. These tags do have special abilities. Libby uses 
um, these special abilities to auto tag or notify you. So the first one you'll see, it looks like a little receipt there. That is a borrowed smart tag. What it does is it automatically tags borrowed books in Libby. So it keeps track of all of the books that you've borrowed. And I'll show you here in a second why I love that tag. I'll also show you how to delete it. I know we have um, some people that want to make sure um, that Libby's nice and secure and respecting your privacy. So I'll also show you how to delete that auto um, borrowed tag. First, right below that, you'll see this notify me magazine tag. Now, the notify me tag is specific to magazines currently. And what it does is the very first time you borrow a magazine, Libby prompts you to create a notify me tag. And then once you have it created, you can tag all of your favorite magazines. And what Libby will do is alert you when the library has a new issue available within Libby. So you're not gonna have to keep going back and looking for the magazine to see if a new issue came out. Libby's just gonna give you a notification that a new issue has arrived. Now for the example here, let's just go ahead and create a new tag to walk through that process. So I'll tap on new tag. And here we can name our tag, whatever we'd like. We could even add a description. Libby gives you a few ideas. I'm a big genre tagger. I, I'm a mood reader. I have to be in the mood for a mystery title. So I like to uh, tag by genre. I'll go ahead and tap on done. And now you'll see that tag has shown up right next to Clark and Division here. So it shows up when we're searching and browsing. You can see it right next to the jacket cover. And one of the reasons I love that is because as we're scrolling through this list for my mom and I, I come across the War Widow and I can see that I have tagged that as to be read. I've already shown interest in this title in the past by tagging it. So if I was looking for that book for my mom and I and I see this to be a uh, red tag, I'd probably go ahead and borrow it straight away, saving me a little bit of time here. Alternatively, if this didn't show up in the list and I come across Devil in the Dark Water, I can see that borrowed smart tag. Now, again, that is Libby automatically tagging uh, books that I've borrowed in Libby. So I know that I've read this in the past. Before this smart tag came out, I guarantee you I've uh, done it a million times, read the first 50 pages or listened to the first 20 minutes of a book only to realize that I've read it before. So that's why I think this borrowed smart tag comes in handy. I can see right as I'm searching, I've read this book before. I can just skip right over it here as I'm looking for my book. Now, if you want to look at your tags in list form, what you're going to do is go over to the stack of books, that shelf there. I just double click so it took me to the top. And you'll see tags right next to those filters for loans and holds. So when you tap on tags, you'll be presented with your full lists of all of the tags that you have. And uh, this one has the most here. So let's go ahead and hop into my wish list. I'll just tap on my wish list tag. And now I'm being presented with my full uh, to be read tag. Now, one thing I always like to point out over here on the right side of the screen is this icon that looks like a library card with a plus sign. That actually means uh, that this book is available to borrow right now. It's not on a waiting list. If it looks like a calendar instead, that means there's currently a waiting list on it. But either of those icons, if you see those, you can tap on them. And Libby will let you borrow or place a hold directly from that screen. And then a little added benefit here that's relatively new is that this is how you could also search across your libraries. So I have two library cards attached to Libby right now, and I'm seeing both of those show up, and Libby's letting me know there is one copy available at each of those libraries. This is a good way to see what library might have, <clears throat> pardon me, the shortest wait list, um, or maybe some libraries don't purchase a book that you want and others have. 
that is a good way to search across multiple libraries there. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop that menu there. Up at the top of the screen, you'll see this actions button. The first thing I'll point out in actions is delete tag. So if you didn't want that borrowed smart tag auto tagging your books, you can go into that tag and delete it and Libby will stop doing it thereafter. So um, you won't have Libby auto tagging your books. And if you delete it and then decide that you want it back, there is the option to uh, add smarts when you create your tag. So you can always bring that back if you want it as well. Now let's go ahead and answer that question here um, about exporting tags. So you'll see export tag is that second option here in this list. I'll go ahead and tap on that. And here is uh, the different file formats that Libby gives us options for. Depending on what you want to do with it, some of these might work better than others. I'm going to go ahead and tap on table just for the example here. Now, once you select your file format here, you will be brought to the data export page. Now, on the data export page, you'll see all of your titles here appear down at the bottom. To export your tag here, you'll tap on Libby. No, you won't. Sorry, I'm actually improving here because I've never exported a tag in Libby app. <laughs> dot com before when you export on this page you're actually just sharing the link from the web browser oh good to know yep. so i'm learning something with you right now as well i've done exporting tags a million times in the app version so actually i'll just um talk about what that's going to look like in the app version as well there will be a little share icon that shows up right I don't even think the Libby icon is there in the app version. It'll just be a share icon. You'll tap on the share icon instead, and that will actually give you the option to share your list in a text message. You could share your list in email, and you could print the list out as well. And I'm actually, I'm sure you could probably print it in the web browser version as well in one of your um, menus, whatever your what, whatever web browser you are using. So that is how you can export your tagged lists. Thanks for coming in there, Joe, and uh, saving me from myself. <laughs> so that is uh, tip number three, tagging titles. We're going to go ahead and move into tip number four. This is our last tip of the day before we get into questions. And this is going to be all about uh, making notes and highlights in an ebook. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll open Grant back up here. <clears throat> now um, you'll see that Libby is actually syncing me to where Joe less, last left off because we're using the same demo account. And um, that's what, something that's really nice about Libby is it doesn't matter what device you're using Libby on, as long as you um, have all of your cards attached, Libby's going to synchronize your position between all of your devices. But let's go ahead and talk about making notes and highlights. So I'm going to um, minimize my menus here by tapping on the center of the screen. And what you're going to do when you want to make a note and highlight is start at the very first word in the passage that you want to highlight. So I'll go ahead and start with still. I'm going to click and hold on to that word until it turns blue. If you're using a, a mobile device, you're going to hold your finger on the word still instead. If you tap the screen, it's going to turn the page. So make sure as soon as your finger makes contact, it stays there. And then you're going to move across the screen until the passage that you want, uh, the entire passage turns blue. And then that's when you can release that click or lift your finger up off the screen. And you'll see we have the ability to highlight now. So we can choose some different colors here to stay organized. Let's go ahead and choose green. And then you'll just have to tap on the highlight there to drop your note down. 
Now, just for the sake of demonstration, I'll say this is a note and then tap on save. You can certainly type full paragraphs. I have before, so you're not limited to just one sentence, but for the sake of demonstration there. <clears throat> now I'm paging forward here, and I now want to reference that note that I made earlier. What I'm going to do is come up to the top um, of the screen here where it's three bookmarks in a row, tap on those bookmarks, and you'll see my note and highlight has dropped down in this menu. All we have to do is tap on the highlight itself and it drags us right back over on that page. To see the note that accompanies this highlight, you just have to tap on the highlight and that note is going to drop down. Now, before I leave this, I also want to point out um, definitions. That's really nice, especially for nonfiction as well. So if you tap and hold on a word until it turns blue, you can uh, define the word as well. So we can even see um, some topics that come up. And this actually searches through Wikipedia on topics. So this is particularly nice if you're reading a book that has um, any proper nouns. So when you're reading nonfiction, names of famous people, paintings, works of art, etc., you can also quote unquote define those um, proper nouns and it will give you the little Wikipedia blurb about it as well. So that's a little extra tip I wanted to throw in here in the notes and highlights. I'm going to now uh, leave this book by tapping back up in the top left hand corner. And I'm going to show you how uh, you can find your notes and highlights for a book even after it's returned to the library. And then you can even export those as well. So I'll find I'll show you where you can find the way to export those. So if you've made notes and highlights in a book and it's returned to the library, what you're going to do is go and search for it in Libby. So I'll tap on my search icon here and search for the book that I'm looking for. Now, this is another reason that Borrowed Smart Tag comes in handy. I know this is the book I'm looking for because it has that tag there. I'm going to go ahead and tap on the jacket cover here. And then on uh, your um, description, you'll see reading journey. Your reading journey captures all of the actions that you've ever taken with a book. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on reading journey here. Up at the top of the screen, that actions button will allow you to export your reading data. So this is going to be the same steps of selecting export, choosing your file type, and then in LibbyApp.com, sharing the link um, in Libby app using that share button to uh, email it out to a friend or whatever you'd like to do with it. But also if you scroll down, oh, and it looks like it's not syncing here with um, LibbyApp.com for some reason. If you've made notes and highlights, it will show under the timeline for this title. It will actually show your notes and highlights listed right underneath here. It will just say a highlight and then the percentage of the book that it was in. You'll just have to tap on that specific a highlight and it will pop up in a separate menu here um, to show you that. So that is tip number four there, making notes and highlights in an ebook. So I'm gonna let Joe take back over on the mic here and get us into uh, the Q&A section if you have any questions for us. Thanks, Marissa. And yes, everyone, we are more than happy to set aside some time for questions for you. Feel free to send those through in chat now. So if there is anything you'd like to see in Libby or see again, or just some general questions, we'd uh, love to answer those for you. Oh, coming in with the the best question of them all. One of the ones we get uh, most often. What is the difference between OverDrive and Libby? Um, great question. 
and what is the future of the overdrive app okay you know and you're hitting us with the uh, the good ones today <laughs> so um i'm just going to kind of start with uh, what marissa just took us through in our deep dive these are all features of the Libby app um, and the Libby app alone. They you know, may have kind of been built from the OverDrive app, um, but they are now kind of exclusive and really kind of built to Libby. So um, the, the first thing I would say is, so right now the OverDrive app is being maintained, whereas the Libby app is growing and being developed and taking suggestions and creating new ways to make an easier user experience. But the OverDrive app has um, kind of been communicated across different accounts, uh, will be um, removed from app stores in February of 2022. So if you are a current OverDrive app user and you have it downloaded on your device, you'll still be able to use that um, for some part of 2022, um, but no new users will be able to download it. Um, and then at some point in 2022, which will be shared before it happens, uh, the app itself will be sunset. But as kind of the, the main or major differences, so both the Libby and classic OverDrive apps allow you to borrow and read. It's the same content regardless of app, but they do look and feel very different. So Libby um, has that fresh, easy to use design that we've gone through and Libby was built from the ground up with user feedback. So we took the, the like decade of OverDrive app feedback and built Libby using that. Uh, so you've seen um, it's it's got a very simple step-by-step -step process the first time you sign or the first time you open the app to sign on. If you are someone with multiple library cards, all of your loans and holds from every library you're signed into are on one shared shelf so you can easily find your books in one place instead of having to swap between libraries to find where did I borrow that book I'm looking for. Um, you can start reading immediately after you borrow. You don't have to choose a file format. If you never have to worry about uh, not being connected to the internet, you could also stream titles if you don't want to download onto your device. You can see at a glance progress on your shelf for every book you've got borrowed. You can navigate very easily between your shelf and your library catalog using your build, using that library building. Um, and then of course you can add so many cards, you can tag, which is one of the biggest features in Libby. And then you can set those preferences with which Marissa showed us as well to really kind of curate the way um, languages are displayed, uh, age restriction content, things like that. And then the last one that I always used to, uh, that I always like to point out is if you are an audiobook lover, Libby is kind of designed for you. Uh, Libby has a kind of a better way of downloading audiobooks so you won't ever be missing content. Um, it's either downloaded or it's not. Uh, let's see. Okay, what about only using a browser? So we've actually uh, done all of Libby app. Uh, we've done all of our Libby demo today from the LibbyApp.com browser. Now, if you are using the app or you're using the the browser experience, all of the buttons are the same. All of the steps are the same. The uh, only there are there are only two differences between using the browser versus using the app. If you are using the browser, of course, email preference is how you can be alerted if a hold becomes available or any of those other notifications because there isn't a push notification for the browser and you can't download for offline use. So if you want to be able to read offline, you will need to use um, the app itself on a compatible device. Um, how do I delete my account in Libby? So you can't delete your account because it's just your library card. Uh, you know, so unless you went and then closed your, if you wanted like your account closed, you'd have to close it with your library. But if you wanted to remove a card, you would go into the Libby menu, which Marissa will do on the screen for me. And under li your libraries, you'll tap on where it says cards. So in this case, we have two, we're tapping on two cards. And then you'll see up at the top, there are two smaller cards. You pick the one that you want to remove and then tap on actions on the card and then remove. So this is kind of the only way to sign out. Uh, if you are using a shared device, you can follow those steps to remove your card.
I'm going to hop in here, Joe. Yeah. <clears throat> you can also reset the app as well. If you want to like fully reset Libby to default back to the sign in page um, before you delete it, you could also do that as well. And that's going to be down in settings underneath help and support. And then um, you can, or no, get some help, sorry, not settings. And then you can reset everything. And so that will um, take you all the way back to the sign in page of the Libby app, and then you can go ahead and delete it. Yes, thank you. I often forget about that one. <laughs> um, can you talk about why it's important to export tags, especially a to be read tag? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So exporting tags is really up to your discretion. Um, but some some ways that I use exporting tags and that I've seen when I'm helping people out is if you want to share a list with um, a book club. So maybe you're a part of a book club and everyone's deciding what they want to read, what book club, when, uh, what book is going to be read at the next book club. Everyone could go into Libby and make their own tag list and then share it with um, everyone else so you could decide. Um, I force my sister to read all the books that I read so I have someone to talk about them with. So I will um, share my um, already read list, but I'll also share my to be read with her and be like, hey, what one do you want to use next? Um, you could also you know, Christmas is coming up. You could, maybe your kids want, um, love to read and they could make a tag list uh, in Libby of all the books that they would like and then share that with you so that when you go and pick out all their books at the store, you have a nice list. So it really is, um, however you'd like to use them, you can find creative ways to use your tags and um, you can export them. Um, in any way that you'd want. So. Exactly. Um, at, one of the things I also like to do is, uh, since I'm around books all the time, I make tag lists for my niece and nephews, and then I export them to my siblings. So when it's story time or bedtime, they could just, you know, kind of scroll through and go, okay, well, this one looks good. And they can, you know, kind of have those borrowed. And it's a, it's a way that if you're a person who likes to recommend, you can recommend. But as far as having to worry about kind of like backing up that data, it's linked to your library card. So you shouldn't have to worry about exporting like a to be read tag if, you know, for any sort of like backup purposes. How long will they be supporting dod.overdrive.com? That is a great question. Will they also be phasing that out? So that is kind of built into, um, the the background. So at this point, there is not um, a set timeline of if they are phasing out sites like that. Um, of course, since LibbyApp.com works just as well in the browser, that is an option available. But at this time, there are no plans shared to be um, phasing out those overdrive.com sites. Great questions. Any other questions? You have both Marissa and I here. We'd love to answer them for you. <laughs> While the participants are thinking questions, um, we do have Christina from our headquarters library program on. And she would also like to make some comments. So Christina, um, if you would like to chime in. Thank you, Anne. Um, one of the things that I just wanted to bring up because we do have users from all the services here is that we are very well aware that our patrons have multiple accounts within the DoD collection. And one of the things we are starting to know now that we've become a consortium is that people are unable to find their holds. They'll get a notification, but then they'll go to their hold shelf and they won't find it. So what is happening is that now that we are all technically one library, they have to sign into their other accounts in order to be able to see it. Unfortunately, um, we don't have the option to have the, the various um, library cards on the Libby app 
as we were shown, because technically we're all considered to be one library, we just have the multiple different authentication methods. So if you have a hold on something and you log into your account and you don't see it, please check one of your other service accounts to see if it might be there, um, because this has been happening. We have had it, um, people reporting this um, quite, a, quite a lot. The other thing I'd like to point out is that I am the person who is curating the site. So if there is a list that you guys need, um, if it's in support of the mission or something, feel free to uh, get in touch with me directly. Um, my name is Christina Kruger, and I can create that list for you so that it is actually a permanent list and not just a tag if it's something. For instance, right now I'm working with the European office because I guess there's a European military reading list and we're going to get that put up on the site. And that goes for all services. So if there's something that you guys need in support of mission, or you just want um, in support of some kind of activity that you're doing, you feel free to reach out to me and I can do some curation with that. Also, um, starting in January, we are going to have the DOD Virtual Book Club. So we will be having books available for teens, adults, and kids in simultaneous use. And so make sure to check those out, uh, check that out. Um, we're kind of beta testing it. so. So January, February, and March, we are going to have a DOD virtual book club. Um, and if you have any other questions about the curation or about purchasing content for the site, please feel free to reach out to me and I can answer all your questions. I also do the purchasing at the DOD level. Thank you. Christina, could you also talk to folks a little bit about the difference between the general DOD site and the different services sites. So for example, the the generic DOD one and then what happens from there? Sure. Okay, so the we have a consortium site now, as you guys should be well aware. And so everybody has access for the most part to two collections. We have a shared collection, which is the DOD site. And if you are not logged in on dod.overdrive.com, the content you'd be able to see is the shared content. So th those are the items that are available to every user once they are logged in. And right now I think it's approximately like 45,000, maybe 50,000 items. That, um, that collection is growing, but it has a much more limited development plan. Then we have what we call the service collections. So depending on who you have your library account with, you will also then have um, access to additional content. So if you are um, log in, you may see, okay, originally I had access to 40,000 items and now I have access to 140,000 items. And that's just, so those other items are only available to the user based on where they have their library account, who they have their library account through. And that's because those are being funded by the individual services. So there's an Army account, an Air Force account, and a Navy account. The, uh, the Marines share with the Navy. So we are actively adding to that DOD account. And, when the, and then the services are also adding to their own accounts. So if you're looking for something that you think would be interested for all services, feel free to reach out to me. I do the collection development for the DOD account. If you're looking for something that you think is more just for your specific service, reach out to whoever is in charge of purchasing for that. Uh, in my case, I am also in charge of the Army. So if it's a DOD or an Army title, feel free to reach out to me. Um, we try to buy almost everything that is requested, but that is the big difference. So if people, um, sometimes people are like, oh my God, I lost all, you know, you guys lost all this stuff. No, that means you're not logged in. <laughs> you're just looking at the DOD account. And then once you log in, you have access to more items. And Anne, um, there's one more thing I'd like to say, but I don't think we should record it. Okay, we'll we'll save that until the end. Of okay. Our... <laughs> Thank you for presenting, Christina. And I'm going to turn it over to Joe and Marissa again. It looks like there are some additional comments in the chat. Yeah. Um, so great point brought up that there are occasions uh, where Libby will um, 
it's more of an authentication thing where every once in a while Libya is going to request that users sign back in just to make sure that their credentials are still valid with their library. But there was a bug at some point that would cause users to sign out and that would also clear their tags and activity, which is why if you are using Libya on multiple devices, we recommend using the setup code to link those all together. So it may only clear on one device, um, but if you are worried about um, about losing your tags, especially like a to be read list, um, you could definitely kind of archive or export an archive at your own pace um, if that's something you want to make sure you're maintaining. Uh, it's not something we see all the time, but as mentioned, the developers are aware of it and um, the fixes are always in place. We don't want people to lose their lists uh, and their tags. So. Um, great question. How do you do the setup code? So actually when you are signing into Libby, there is going to be, you know, a few options. Libby is going to take you through the whole process. Um, you set up your first device using, you know, the steps kind of provided, but when you set up a second or third, there is an option that says set up from my other device. And what you'll do is you'll take the device that's already set up and under help and support. You tap on that, get some help. Actually, is it settings now? It's settings now. Sorry, they just changed this. In settings, you change, you choose copy to another device, and this will generate a code that refreshes every 60 seconds. You type that in on the device that's being set up, and it will pull all of your card info in. So if you have access to, as Christina was saying, multiple libraries within the system, or if you are using both uh, DOD libraries and civilian libraries on one device, it'll pull all of that info in for you, um, including syncing your tags. Of course, I, we are more than happy to help. Um, now that does wrap up all of our content. Of course, please feel free to send through any other questions you might have. Um, if you want to end the recording here, you're more than welcome to. I'll answer any other remaining questions via chat um, while Christina wraps up with her message as well. Okay, well, this is Anne switching over, and I just wanted to thank Joe and Marissa for coming in and answering all of our questions today that we have about Libby and Overdrive. And I also want to thank the attendees for coming. I hope you enjoyed this and you are ready to go out and use this wonderful resource.